So if you're not already familiar with 1420, Daniel or Orain, uh, he does a great job. I've <clears throat> highlighted a number of his videos in the past. And generally, he does man on the street interview kind of thing. And he'll ask about, do you think the Russians are winning? Or should the Russians be in Ukraine or something along these lines? And, and it's really telling what just average Russians will say or refuse to say because they're worried about what the repercussions might be. In this video, and a number of you have sent this to me and said, yo, you got to see this. Um, this uh, grandmotherly lady is just speaking her mind. And it's very unusual for someone to do what she's doing. But she, she gives a very interesting perspective. So we're going to listen to this. He's going to ask, he's going to set it up in English, but then he's going to ask her in Russian and everything will be in Russian. So I'll be speaking through most of it. So this was just phenomenal to watch. Hats off to Daniel Orian. Ladies and gentlemen, I was editing a video about the upcoming elections in Russia. And usually I put a lot of interviews in one video, but uh, this interview exactly, I thought it deserves its own video. And, and it really did deserve its own video. She's asked about Putin's opposition, the opposition candidate uh, who was struck from the ballot with all these errors. It, she didn't even get a chance to raise her signatures. I mean, it was like you could tell 100 errors on an application. I mean, how how could that even have been? So at any rate, um, yeah, so here we go. It cannot be called elections. It's nonsense. Results already known. What's your name? Vera Ananova. Vera Ananova, I want to tell you about a lady that was going to oppose Putin in the elections. And then he's talking about her and what happened, how she struck from the ballot. And he had a web page or a comment on his uh, uh, YouTube about it. She was disqualified from the elections because she made a paperwork mistake. Why is Putin's opposition being kept out of the elections? Why are you being such a baby? It's been going on for 20 years. Okay, so let's stop right there. She gets it. It's, this has been par for the course. I've made this comment before, but if in any election in your lifetime, you're an adult, let's say you're 40 or older and you're an adult, let's say you're in America, have you been surprised by the results of any election? I don't mean that, that you didn't get your guy, but I mean like you, it's not been a given. It's not been, the outcome has not been fixed. If you haven't been surprised, then it's probably not been free and fair elections. If you've been surprised and been like, ah, crap, I really wanted this guy, but that guy won. And right. That's probably how a good sign that you're in free and fair elections. Okay. They won't let her in because they already know the outcome. What is the point of elections if it's already known that he will rule another six years? Everyone already knows the results. And, that, and that's right. That's exactly the system that they're in. They have the facade of elections, but the elections aren't to say who actually won, but to give the, uh, I don't know, preordained candidate who everybody knows is going to win to try to build some legitimacy for him. Uh, but it's not real elections. Our people are so idiotic, so slave-like. I don't understand why people tolerate this. Why do people think it's an election? How is it an election? The results are in. The winner is already known. Like, this is a really dangerous thing for her to be doing, to be speaking the truth, but yet she's doing it. And I got to give hats off to her. Like, this is why multiple people have sent this to me and said, wow, you've got to see this. The authorities are really not letting the opposition into the election. Gosh, it's clear. Our people are just as dumb and as slavish as possible. People were serfs, and now they are slaves. Why is there a war going on? Because the people are silent. Now, that's a really good point, because in the system within Russia, the people are like if the people would rise up and they're not going to, I don't believe they're going to. But if the people would rise up, things would change significantly. But they have been beaten down for long enough. And then when the Soviet Union collapsed, Russia just kind of kept going a similar kind of direction as maybe at a slower pace or whatever, or they've come back more toward an authoritarian kind of thing. Somebody said on my channel, uh, 
almost a year ago. Ukrainians are Cossacks, Russians are serfs, and there's a real difference in the mentality in the Ukrainians who are willing to overthrow or to cast off or whatever it is. That they're they're willing to rise up. Um, Russians aren't. They're just like keep their head down and ignore it. Okay, why is there a war going on? Because people are silent. Our writer Pushkin said 200 years ago that the people are silent. Keep, people will keep quiet and tolerate once the famine comes. They'll suffer. I'm no longer blaming Putin, but our people who allow themselves to be bullied. Okay, so I'm not going to go quite that far because it's they've like been conditioned into it. Like, don't do this or you're going to die or bad things are going to happen or you're going to go to jail or whatever it is. But she's right that the people are allowing it. Our people are completely stupid, she says. I'm not saying that. People want to eat, sleep, drink vodka, have a car, and that's it. A scum. Scum. The Russians are the greatest and the best. What are they talking about? Disgusting people. The more I learn about this country, the more I hate it. Well, I mean, so... Here's part of factoring this in. Propaganda is targeted people primarily at her demographic and maybe a little bit younger than that. If you're 50, like I'm 50 years old, I actually remember like the coup on Gorbachev when I was physically in the car driving to college. So I was 18 and the fall of the of the Soviets about the same of the Soviet Union about the same time, the Berlin Wall coming down, that kind of thing. This was right. So I kind of remember that. So she lived for a long time under the Soviet system. She's older than me. Okay, I know, yeah, just clarifying that. Okay, so she's older than me. She remembers the Soviet system. The more she learns about how the system works, then, now, whatever, the more she hates it, she says. Tell me, would pluralism of opinion be useful in our country? Asks the moderator. What pluralism? Look at our TV programs. That's a good point. It's a really good point. Look, look at this, like Solyov and, and, and others that are on there. Have you seen pluralism there? There's, there's this pretense of pluralism, pretense of different opinions in these talk shows. There's not really different opinions. They, they are triangulating on getting the state message out. There are such insolent people. They're being paid to deceive the population, she says. That's quite a insight. Our nation is already insane and stupid, and they are dumbing it down even more. Just look at them. What are they talking about? People die in the war. What is it? Now, the moderator asks, is there any opposition in Russia at all? What do you mean? The opposition was nailed a long time ago. In 12, there was the last protest of opposition. No opposition after that. People are imprisoned for expressing their opinions. What opposition? And so she starts talking about or giving examples. I'm not even talking about Navalny. What opposition? Zero. Like Navalny was just found. Uh, he's in a penal colony in the Arctic, it appears, because they're trying to keep him far, far away, make it hard for his lawyers to be able to get to him, that kind of thing. How much longer is this going to go on? Why are the young people so silent? Are they really enjoying all this? It's a nightmare. I'm 83 years old and I was unhappy with the Soviet regime, but there was no such ugliness as there is now. Like that, that's crazy to my mind. <laughs> no such ugliness as there is now with the Soviet regime. Now, but here's why. Listen to this. So at least for them, there was some kind of future. At least apartments were given out then. At least it was something. You know, so think about this. In the Soviet system, yes, you had no freedom. You had no ability to chart your own course, but you were provided for with your apartment and your food coupons and whatever else. But the deal was you speak up, you're going to get killed or sent to jail or whatever else. Here, you don't even get that and you can't speak up. So like you have the worst elements of both capital capitalism and communism simultaneously put together. And it's been under 20 years of Putin. It's not like he can escape it and say, it wasn't me. I mean, I, I was doing, uh, just give me a chance and I'll fix it. He can't be a ruler for 20 years. His vision is already completely blurred. Everyone lies to him. Brilliant insight, Granny. Okay, so everyone lies to him. Why do they lie to him? Well, this is what happens in an authoritarian regime. The higher you go, the more people are trying to just tell you what you want to hear rather than what you need to understand. 
Everyone lies to him. And he is like, I hate to look at him. I don't want to see him. 20 years in power, no shame, no conscience. He is a blank. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's just an amazing thing what this lady was willing to actually say. But I've got to think that there are more people like her that are are wanting to express that, but just can't seem to do it because they've been beat down by a system that has told them for so many years, if you say anything, bad things are going to happen to you, so don't do it. Okay, tell me what you thought about this. Again, go out to 1420 and see the interviews that are out there. They'll give you amazing context for what average Russians are thinking. This is this is one of my go-to resources when I'm trying to get into a average Russian kind of mind. All right. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the shares. Thank you for the subscribes. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.